Aloha. Welcome to Human Embryology, Lecture One. We're going to just dive right into it. Um, we're going to start with some basic terminology. First of all, we have here an embryo and a fetus. Normally, I would pose the question to the class, what's the difference? How do we know which is which? But since this is a recorded lecture, I'm just going to go ahead and answer my own question. So um, this one over here is the embryo. And what makes it an embryo is the fact that it is the uh, early stages of development, the unborn offspring of some multicellular eukaryotic organism. Okay. What makes this one a fetus is the fact that we can tell in this case, that it's a human being, or if it were a bird or a lizard or a cow or a dog or whatever, uh, what makes it a fetus is that you can tell what species it is and it's not yet been born, okay? So definitions, an embryo is the early stages of development of a multicellular eukaryotic organism versus a fetus, which is the unborn offspring of an organism that has acquired the unique structural plan of its species. Um, moving on, we're gonna talk about some anatomical terms. Um, we talk about things a little bit differently prenatally than we do postnatally. So postnatally you have you know, a person whose top is superior and the bottom is inferior and the front is anterior and the back is posterior, right? The trouble with that is that with a, a fetus, or, or, um, or an embryo, you don't know which way is up or which way is down. The thing could be upside down or sideways or facing you. Or it's basically swimming around in a balloon. And so, you know, what's up and down and left and right becomes kind of ambiguous. So to that end, we don't talk about things being superior. We talk about things being towards the head, which is uh, cranial, or being towards the tail, which is caudal, right? The belly surface is the ventral surface and the back surface is the dorsal surface. So things that are towards the belly are ventral and things that are towards the back are dorsal, okay? Uh, we're gonna go over these again in a second, so don't worry too much about that yet. Um, but for uh, you know purposes of this class, right? Superior is analogous to cranial, inferior is analogous to caudal, anterior and ventral, posterior and dorsal, right? Dorsal is the back surface, ventral is the belly surface, caudal is towards the tail, cranial is towards the head, all right? Uh, medial and lateral carries over, medial meaning towards the midline and lateral meaning away from the midline, all right? Um, make sure you know that because that might be on a quiz too. Now this one definitely will be on the quiz, okay? Sexual sectional anatomy is really important because we're going to be using it a lot all the way throughout the course of this class. We're going to be looking at embryos and fetuses um, cut up in a whole bunch of different ways. Okay, so here we have on the left side of the screen, uh, the frontal or coronal plane, a, a section in the coronal plane, which is basically if the guys turn sideways to, to you and you cut them in half um, from top to bottom, that's the coronal plane. When the person's facing towards you and you cut them in half from top to bottom, that's the sagittal plane, okay? Um, anywhere that we slice this would still be a sagittal plane, a sagittal section, but then of course the middle one is called the median. Uh, and then of course we have the transverse section which is cut crossways. Oops, sorry about that. Cut crossways, right? And again, same thing, anywhere that you cut this, if you cut it across the head or across the neck, all of this, those are still transverse sections, okay? 100% uh, guarantee you that these are gonna be on the quiz. So please know the difference between a coronal plane, a median plane, and a transverse plane, okay? Um, next, we're gonna go over some reproductive anatomy. Now, I know uh, a lot of you have probably had anatomy already, but this is a review for you, uh, and that's great. Uh, we're going to move through it pretty quickly. For those of you that have not had anatomy, um, bear with us and, and uh, you know, 
uh, all these pictures that we're going over, you can find on page eight and nine of your textbook if you need to review them. Okay, so the mail is pretty straightforward. Um, simple, not that complicated. Uh, we have the testicle down here. The testicle is made up primarily of these uh, little tiny tubules called the seminiferous tubules. This is where the sperm is initially formed. Okay, and then as the sperm is formed, it travels through these tiny tubules, these winding tubes, and uh, eventually winds up in the epididymis. Okay, and the epididymis is the uh, same thing, just a whole bunch of tightly wound tubes. Once you get to the tail of the epididymis, then you travel into the vas deferens or the ductus deferens. Okay, um, this is where most of the maturation of the sperm occurs is in the ductus deferens, right? Long tube wraps up and around in front of the pubic bone over the top of the urinary bladder and comes around behind the bladder where it empties into this widening called the ampulla of the ductus deferens, okay? Just behind the ductus deferens, uh, the ampulla of the ductus deferens, we have the seminal gland. Now this picture drew it pretty small, but uh, it's actually a pretty sizable gland. This is where all of the fluid portion of the semen is produced, okay? Or most of it. Um, so this is the seminal gland. The seminal gland and the ductus deferens both empty into the ejaculatory duct. The ejaculatory duct lives inside this structure right here, which is the prostate. And you'll notice that the prostate also houses part of the urinary urethra. This is the prostatic section of the urethra. Okay. And then this is the, I think it's called the membranous section of the urethra. And then this is the penile portion of the urethra. Okay. Now, uh, you'll notice that both of these guys dump into the urethra and so does the urinary bladder. But uh, interestingly, once the male becomes uh, erect, once the male gets an erection, this portion of the urethra is blocked off so no urine can actually get through. Uh, the only thing that can come through once the male is erect is the semen. The seminal urethra remains open. Okay, so uh, this guy down here is called the bulbo urethral gland. This guy produces lubrication, right? His job is to lubricate the pathway uh, down the rest of the urethra so that the semen can flow smoothly without obstruction. All right, so this empties into the urethra. And uh, when a man ejaculates, basically there is a contraction of the ampulla of the ductus deferens, the seminal gland, the prostate and the bulbo urethral gland, all of this stuff contracts in one big uh, unified contraction, which squeezes all the semen uh, through and out of the urethra, okay? Um, most of the penis is made up of this uh, erectile tissue. The way that that erectile tissue works is there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of capillaries in there. There's a considerable amount of blood flowing into this area. Um, and when man becomes erect, the blood flow out is blocked, right? So you have a lot of ingress and no egress, which causes this tissue to fill up like a balloon and it becomes very stiff and hard. And, uh, and this is how an erection occurs, okay? Uh, the rest of it's not really super important to our class. You have the head of the penis, which is called the glans penis, and it's covered by a foreskin. And that foreskin is what is chopped off when a man gets, um, circumcised as a child, if you get circumcised as a child, okay? That's pretty much it for male anatomy. Like I said, pretty straightforward and simple. If you need to review that, again, the picture, this picture is on page nine of your, or eight, page eight of your textbook, okay? Female reproductive system, the female reproductive anatomy is considerably more interesting and complicated, okay? This picture is more of just a basic over overview, right? We have the ovary, we have the uterine or fallopian tube. I usually call it the fallopian tube. Uh, and then you have uh, the uterus, right? So the ovary uh, ejects an egg into the uterine tube. It travels down the uterine tube into the uterus. The uterus has three layers, the parametrium, the myometrium, and the endometrium. And then there's the uterine cavity, okay? Uh, the uterus, uh, the opening of the uterus is called the cervix, and this guy opens into the vaginal canal, okay? And then the vaginal canal opens into the uh, vagina. There are two folds of skin called the labia minora and the labia majora. In between the two labia minora, there's one on each side. 
um, there's a structure called the clitoris, and this is analogous to the male's penis. This is erectile tissue. It becomes stiff and hard uh, when the woman gets aroused, right? Uh, interestingly, you'll notice that in the case of female, in the, in the case of the female, the urinary bladder is not in any way connected to the reproductive system. The urethra comes straight out of the urinary bladder and opens into the vaginal opening right behind the clitoris and has no connection at all with uh, the vaginal canal or the um, uterus or the cervix. None of the other reproductive organs are connected to it directly. Um, to get a little more of an in-depth look at the female reproductive system, okay, again, here we have uh, this is the ovary, right? And the ovary is connected to the uterine tube by this ligament tissue. This is called the broad ligament of the uterus. And this actually stretches all the way down around here, but uh, that's not pictured here. So basically what happens is this guy explodes, it ruptures and spits an egg out, okay? You have this structure called the infundibulum over here. And that infundibulum has fingers called fembria. And these fembria, they, they, they beat, they make a sweeping motion that pulls fluid inside of the uterine tube. Son of a gun. Uh, and so as it sucks the fluid up like a vacuum, it pulls the egg in there with it. Now, once in a while that doesn't happen and that's called an ectopic pregnancy. We'll go over that later on, okay? So anyway, um, the egg enters into the infundibulum. It's pulled in there by the fembria and then it travels up into the ampulla. The ampulla under normal circumstances is usually where um, is usually where uh, fertilization occurs, okay? Fertilization happens in the ampulla under normal circumstances. Uh, then you have the, infant, uh, the isthmus, right? And the way that the egg travels from here to there is through peristaltic motions, right? The same way that food gets pushed down your intestines, the peristaltic muscle contractions push the egg all the way through into the uterine cavity, okay? Now, like I mentioned before, the uterus has three distinct layers, okay? It has the uh, epimetrium, which is the skin of the uterus, okay? It's kind of just a thin skin that uh, coats it. Then we have the myometrium, which is the muscular layer. This is the one that contracts when you're having, um, you know, contractions during pregnancy. This is what's causing that. It's very, very strong. It's smooth muscle. Uh, and then the innermost layer here is called the endometrium, okay? The endometrium is where all the action happens, okay? In the myometrium, you have the larger arteries, okay? And then those give way to straight arteries and spiral arteries uh, once you get into the endometrium. You have the basal, basal layer that's mostly um, concerned with blood flow, right? Um, then you have the functional layer, which is where all the nutrition and stuff like that hides out for when the egg implants. Uh, you have a lot of capillary beds. You have a lot of, um, these are kind of called lacunae. We'll get into that later on. Uh, but then you have the uterine glands, all of the, all of the glands and capillary beds and all the stuff that's useful to the uh, egg, uh, to the embryo is all located in this area. Okay. Now, um, Guarantee you this slide is going to be on the quiz. Okay, there's going to be stuff for you to label on it. So you can find this picture in your textbook on page nine. You will want to know it well. All right. So moving on, we're going to talk about gametogenesis. Right. Gametogenesis means the formation of gametes or reproductive cells. Right. So we start with a spermatogonium or a primary oocyte and these guys have 46 chromosomes. The spermatogonium has an X and a Y chromosome in there. The primary oocyte has two X chromosomes in there somewhere, right? Eventually, we're going to end up with a sperm cell that has 23 chromosomes and either an X or a Y mixed in there. And then, uh, or the primary oocyte is eventually going to wind up being an egg, which has 23 chromosomes and one of them is an X, okay? Um, Basically, the X and the Y are the, are the sex chromosomes. They determine whether or not you're a male or a female. If you have an X and a Y, you are a male. If you have two Xs, you are a female, right? So, meiosis versus mitosis. 
mitosis is normal cell division, right? Mitosis with a T is normal cell division, happens in your skin, happens uh, <laughs> in your core. Most of your epithelium is all undergoing active mitosis all the time. Uh, it happens in your liver, it happens in your stomach lining, and there's a lot of places in your body where this is going on, okay? Uh, basically, during mitosis, you start with 46 chromosomes, you end with 46 chromosomes. You basically take one cell and turn it into two cells that are basically identical. Okay, meiosis is a little different. You're going to start with one cell that has 46 chromosomes and you're going to end up with two cells that have 23. Okay, um, so the first part, so and then the other big difference too is mitosis is one division and we're done. The process of meiosis actually has two divisions, okay? So that's something that you might wanna make a note of, okay? Meiosis, mitosis with a T is only one division while meiosis is two divisions, okay? So the first division is really similar to mitosis. Meiosis and mitosis are basically the same during this first phase, okay? So all of these part up here, uh, A, B, C, and D, this is prophase, right? And prophase basically involves the winding up of the DNA into chromosomes, okay? Chromosomes have chromatids, right? So for example, this is a pair of chromosomes, right? Chromosomes bundle up in pairs and each half of that pair is a chromatid, okay? Does that make sense? Um, and basically what happens is the DNA has already been synthesized. So there's twice as much in the cell as there's supposed to be. It gets all wound up into chromosomes. And so uh, right now there would be whatever double 46 is, okay? Lots of, D, uh, lots of genetic tissue inside the cell. Uh, during metaphase, it all gets wound up in the middle, lined up by these spindles, okay? And then the spindles basically pull the chromosomes to opposite poles of the cell. Right, so half the chromosomes go this way, half the chromosomes go that way. And then during, uh, so that's called anaphase. And then during telophase, the cell divides in two, okay? If you're doing mitosis, we're done now. But during meiosis, um, this process keeps going. Now, um, during normal cell division mitosis, the next thing that will happen is interphase. And during interphase, the cell does what it normally does, right? If it's a salivary cell, it makes saliva. If it's a, an acid cell in your stomach, it makes acid. It does the normal function of whatever the cell does, okay? Um, in the case of meiosis, at this stage of the game, we are going to um, basically skip interphase and then we're gonna skip prophase. Everything is just gonna stay wound up in chromosomes these are going to realign themselves in the center of the cell, and these chromosomes are going to be pulled apart at the chromatid so that uh, you end up with one chromatid going this way and one chromatid going that way. So you end up now with half as many chromosomes in each cell. Does that make sense? So two, two chromatids make... Um, Maybe I've got that wrong. Maybe it's two chromosomes that make a chromatid. Anyway, it's not important. These chromosome pairs get split apart, right? So now we have where we had 46 up here. Now down here, we've got 23. And you know, in the picture, it's we started up here with four and now we've got two. Does that make sense? Can everybody see that? Right up here, there are, oh shoot. Up here, there are one, two, three, four, and then by the time we get down to here, there is one, two, right? I probably beat that like a dead horse, but I just wanna make sure you guys understand. Now, male versus female, okay? Uh, the slide is wrong. <laughs> Don't get too worked up about this. This would actually be still 40, 46 XY and 46 XY. And then when you get down to here, then it becomes, this would be a 23X and a 23Y and a 23X and a 23Y, but that's not really important. Okay, what's important to note about this is you start with one spermatogonium and one primary spermatocyte. And then this guy, so the spermatogonium matures into a spermatocyte. And uh, then one primary spermatocyte results at the end of it all in four sperm. Okay, four sperm are formed from one primary spermatocyte. On the female side, remember I said female are more interesting. Um, <laughs> 
females are more interesting in almost every aspect of reproduction um, from their anatomy right down to the process, right? But uh, one thing that you, what you need to remember about the females, there's a bunch of stuff you gotta remember about females, but one of them in particular is the primary, one primary oocyte results in only one egg, right? Where one primary spermatocyte makes four sperm, one primary oocyte makes only one egg at the end of the process, okay? So what happens and why that is, is as these divisions happen, the cytoplasm and the organelles and all the other parts of the cell do not divide evenly, right? In the, in the male, they kind of divide evenly. So you make basically two comparable um, gametes. Well, in the female, you basically, the, the DNA splits off and is, you can see it right here, uh, just a very small amount of cytoplasm and no organelles and it kind of gets glued to the wall of the cell and they call this a polar body. They can't really call it a cell because it doesn't have any of the other things that make a cell. It's just a lump of DNA glued to the wall, okay, behind a membrane. So that's called a polar body. So what happens is um, you have this uh, first meiotic division, okay? And once this first meiotic division happens, everything stops. The whole process stalls and pauses and waits. And it stays like this until that cell, until that egg cell is ovulated. Then once ovulation occurs, it starts to progress again. And it progresses only through metaphase. And once it gets to metaphase, it stalls again. And it pauses and it waits. And that last meiotic division does not occur until the egg gets fertilized. Once a sperm penetrates and the male DNA enters the cell, at the same time, that last meiotic division completes forming a second polar body. Okay, is that, uh, ho hopefully I explained that well enough. Um, the things that are gonna be really important for you to remember on the quiz is first of all, one oocyte makes one egg versus one spermatocyte makes four sperm, okay? And the other things that you need to remember for the quiz and the test are that after the first meiotic division occurs in the female, everything stalls until ovulation. Once ovulation occurs, it progresses to metaphase and then stalls again. Once fertilization occurs, the second meiotic division is completed at the same time that fertilization occurs. And that forms the second polar body, okay? Hopefully I explained that well enough. Again, all this information is in the book. I tried to take it and translate it into a very much more understandable format because reading the book is, you know, it's medical ease. It's, <laughs> it doesn't read very well. Um, they wrote it very much the way PhDs write stuff. Um, and I think that is it for today. Uh, next time in lecture two, we're gonna be going over uh, the female reproductive cycle uh, transportation of gametes and maturation of viable gametes. And uh, then we will be having a quiz on the first two lectures, chapters one and two in your book. Okay, that's it for today. We'll see you at the next lecture. Aloha.